To get, today we're going to write a simple clock program in HTML using JavaScript. And because we're using JavaScript, that means it's a client-side clock. That means that whatever the clock is locally to the, to the user, not to the server, that's what time it's going to appear. Now we begin with a very simple page that would have, uh, right here I've taken my first JavaScript page and i uh, got a HTML head, body, that whole bit. And from there we're going to add a script, language equals JavaScript, type equals text slash JavaScript. We're going to add that to the head. That's where we're going to place all of our functions. In this case we're only going to have one function, but I've outlined that in comment form so that I can more easily identify where the function is. Then down below in the body, I'm going to put another script. Same language equals JavaScript and so on. That's where I'm going to execute the function. That's where I'm going to call the function. So the script in the head creates a function. The script in the body calls the function. Now this function is going to be called get the time. And you notice the camel case spelling. So the G is lowercase and the T of the and the T of time are both uppercase. Two parentheses. That's where I would put my parameters, my extra information needed at the time of execution, though in this case those parameters are empty, nothing in between, so I'm not sending any additional information. The semicolon, though not necessary, is something I put as uh, my part of it, just to get you used to semicolons to end a complete thought. Now, inside the function called get the time, we knew the name of the function because we called it down below, so it had to be called this, get the time. We have open brace and close brace there for that function. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a variable called d. That d is going to be equal to new and, in, and then date, date parentheses actually. Getting the semicolon is optional. But the date has a capital D, and that's important because that date is a JavaScript object. In fact, we can Google date JavaScript object, and you'll notice that uh, there's tons of sites out there that you can use to, to get at this information. But this JavaScript date object, the date has a capital D, that's important because it is case sensitive, and has many methods like get date, get day, get full year. Notice they're all camel case. Get hours, that has an S on hours, so in a capital H, and it says return the hour from 0 to 23. That means there are 24 hours in a day, but they're numbered from 0 to 23. Now, I'm going to have a variable called H that equals D dot get hours. And what that's saying is D is a date, an object. Get hours is a method of that object. So once you've created this new date, it basically grabbed the system clock's date and said, okay, now I have this object. And embodied in that are many things that you can do, such as retrieve the hours from that date. So I'll put those into H. Now we know that H is going to be a number from 0 to 23. We also have variable m, which is equal to d dot get minutes. So I now know the hour and minutes, but hour 0 to 23 is not normally the way we would refer to the hour of the day. I'm also going to set up an a.m. p.m. because we usually work with 0, I'm sorry, we work from 12 to 12, a, uh, 12 to 11 a.m. and then 12 to 11 p.m. That's usually the way we work. So I'm going to assume by default that it's a.m., although it won't obviously always be a.m. So I'm going to say, well, if h is greater than or equal to 12, what do I know about that number? Anything from 12 to 23 is actually going to be a p.m. So the variable a.m. p.m. is going to have two options. Either it's going to start out as a.m. and stay that way, or it's going to be reassigned a value of p.m. if h is greater than or equal to 12. Now at that point I'm also going to say h equals h minus 12. That way a number like 23 minus 12 is 11. So we know that hour 23 is really 11 p.m. The only problem with that of course is, well what if the hour was 12? 12 minus 12 is 0, which of course you could have had a 0 anyway. Now the difference is if you started with 0, we know it's going to stay a.m. If it was 12, we know hour is now 0, but we now know it's been changed to p.m. 
So what we can do is say if our equals 0, if h equals 0, but notice that's not just a plain equal sign, that's a double equal, because a single equal sign in JavaScript means assignment, a double equals means comparison. So if h compares to 0, if that's true, then h equals 12, because of course, whether it's 12 noon or 12 midnight, we refer to the first hour of the day as a 12. Now, what about the minutes? Well, if minutes are less than 10, we want to add a 0 to that minutes. Now, this is kind of interesting because m is actually a number. But what I've done here is I've said m equals, and in quotes, 0 plus m. That's the string 0. You notice if I didn't have quotes around the 0, it would be adding a value of 0 to m, which means it wouldn't change m. But what I'm doing here is I'm saying add a string to that number. And that, of course, makes m now a string. It's no longer a number if it has to do that. Because we need 5 minutes after the hour needs to be you know, 9 colon 0, 5, not just 9 colon 5. So in that case, if m is less than 10, it'll do that. And then I can say document.write, and in parentheses, I put whatever it is I want to write. So I begin with an H, that would just be the hours. But then I add with a plus sign. That just, it means concatenate or add to this, whatever you're printing, add, in this case, in quotes, a colon, and then add the minutes. So it's going to write um, whatever the hour is, colon, the minutes. And then it's going to add either the letters AM or the letters PM, because we have a variable that happens to be called AMPM, which will have e either of those values. Now, I've decided to center this here inside the document. Don't have to do that, but simple. Uh, I can't just write center and slash center, because this is not HTML I'm writing. I'm writing JavaScript. So I have to say document.write, and in quotes, inside the parentheses, I have the word center or slash center. At that point, if it was 10, 10, 17 p.m. when I was working on this, you're going to see a 10 colon 17 p.m. Now, to turn this into a clock, because that will only do that once, I'm going to go into the a meta tag that I'm going to create up in the head. And that meta tag is going to be http-equiv, so HTTP equivalent equals, and in quotes, refresh. So it's saying what you're going to do is refresh, and then content equals 60. That means every 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds, it's going to recall this page, refresh the page. So it won't necessarily, it, it, the, the moment you go to this page, whatever minute that is, even if it's 55 seconds after the minute, it will wait a minute before it finally switches to the next um, to the next minute and so on. But that way that clock will change every minute from the moment you you looked at it. Now, I'm going to go back to our original index page, well, our index.html page, and what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go inside the code on that here, and I'm just going to add one little thing. I'm going to add an iframe. Now, in this case, my original index is in my public HTML, but the time.html is in a folder called project. So it's going to say iframe source equals, and in quotes, a single quote I had. In this case, it could, could be double quote. Project slash the time.html. And then I close my iframe. That'll give me a default setting for the size of the box. And you can see, in this case, it's now 10.35 PM. So let me go back and change that to say width equals 100 and height equals 25. So I'm going to specify a little different size. And there you can see I have a smaller size box. So on my page, I now have a little box that's going to contain the time. And every minute, that little frame is going to refresh. So it'll change minute by minute. 